What's going on everybody? I'm Rob with The Curated Culture and this is the LG Wing. So the LG Wing is a brand new smartphone from LG, of course, who has been uh, kind of making moon shoots as of lately. Uh, the design on this thing is completely and totally unique. It has kind of a T-bar sliding mechanism that opens up to reveal a secondary screen underneath uh, the primary screen, which is kind of cool, I guess, but ultimately, why do you need this? Well, in all actuality, uh, you probably don't, but LG is, again, trying to go for some moon shoots and attract a new customer base into the fold. And uh, I, for one, am, am kind of intrigued by this design. Now, uh, I spoke with LG about some of the design principles in the phone itself, and there are a couple of really, really cool features in this device. I feel like it might be geared more towards an, a more niche audience than any device that you'll see released this year. And that's fine, because again, uh, LG isn't targeting everybody for this specific device. So, what's cool about it? Well, for starters, you got a massive 6.8 inch OLED display right up front. So, the colors are going to be nice and vibrant and robust. And I'm actually a big fan of the quality of the display on this phone. Like, it, it actually looks really really nice now the secondary screen underneath same quality doesn't really dip out in resolution or anything like that and once you set up the home screen you can actually have it so that it does kind of this little carousel effect on the top display while you have your main secondary display right underneath there and it's not necessarily just a novel thing. Like there are actually a couple of really cool uses for this. So part of the second screen experience lends its way to additional functionality within certain apps. So for example, when you're watching YouTube videos, you can have your main video playing in the top screen and then right underneath there, you have almost like a remote control sort of uh, player right underneath. So you can kind of scrub through videos go forward, go backwards, control the volume. It's actually very practical, surprisingly. In text messaging, you kind of get this really, really neat uh, dual screen function as well. So you basically flip the phone upside down. So the secondary screen is now on the top. But when you do so, you now get your keyboard underneath and then a little mini window to see what it is you're actually typing. That's kind of cool. I really dig that. So the sliding screen, while very, very gimmicky, has its usefulness, but none more useful than the really hyper ultra cool gimbal mode. Now, if you record videos, you know what a gimbal is. It's like a motorized handheld selfie stick, essentially. Uh, it swivels, it pivots, it allows you to get a little better control in your videos when you're recording. Well, this phone kind of does that same thing but digitally. Within the gimbal, there's three different modes. There's first person view, pan follow mode, so you basically get those really sweet sweeping shots of whatever it is that you're filming. And then there's also a follow mode, so essentially if your face is in frame and you want the gimbal to, again, digitally follow or track that face, it will, relatively simply. Um, I used it, it looked pretty cool, it worked decently. The one thing to keep in mind though is LG is accomplishing all of this camera magic, this gimbal magic, digitally. So the cameras themselves aren't physically moving, so to speak, it's more or less just kind of the sensor itself is moving around in a digital space if that makes sense. All in all, uh, the, the swivel mode, the second screen mode, is again, it's pretty cool, but very gimmicky. Now, as for the phone itself, I mean, the thing is, is kind of a more mid-range hardware sort of device. So, for starters, you're gonna have the Snapdragon 765G processor in there, which is the same processor that LG used inside of the Velvet. It is the same processor that is inside both the Pixel 4a and the Pixel 5, and now also inside of this guy. 
which isn't necessarily a bad thing at all because I didn't really notice any slowdowns or any lag while I was using the phone. It just, it kind of takes away from the whole premium sense of the device. So there's three cameras on the back of this bad devil, much like there's three cameras on the back of the LG Velvet. There's a standard 64 megapixel camera and then two ultra wides. One is a 13 megapixel ultra wide and the other is a 12 megapixel camera. Now probably one of the single coolest things about this phone is the fact that it actually sports a front facing um, selfie camera. Now quite possibly the single coolest thing about the selfie camera on this phone is actually motorized. It pops right up from inside of the device. So uh, a little bit of future tech built into this bad devil. I absolutely love how easy it is to activate, and again, the cool factor with it popping up from inside of the device itself. Now, possibly one of the coolest things about this selfie camera in general is that it's actually pretty good. It's very high quality. It catches all of my wolfish lock fro hair, my untamed beard, in all of its stunning glory. And uh, the audio actually isn't too bad. They included multiple mics so you can record what they're calling uh, ASMR audio, which is essentially where it tracks whether or not you're on the left or right side of the microphone and it adjusts accordingly. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, rounding out the features is uh, a 4,000 milliamp battery, 256 gigs of storage, USB Type-C connectivity, and of course, 5G connectivity. Uh, the phone itself, again, pretty sweet. Not necessarily something that I would be clamoring over, but I, I think it's actually a really cool design, especially when you get into some of those features like the dual screen experience, being able to text on the wider screen while having a secondary small screen. And then it also works with dual app functionality, so you can be doing something like watching a YouTube video simultaneously while texting a friend, or you could be looking at maps while composing an email. It really takes that whole simultaneous voice and data thing uh, very seriously. It is a uh, productivity geared phone, minus the productivity geared phone hardware. Again, this is very much a mid-range handset in terms of the hardware, and that's, that's really the only drawback that I have to say about this phone. Battery life is good. Screen quality is good. I love the tech on board. It, it just at times feels a little too gimmicky. All in all though, a uh, big fan of the LG Wing. I, I honestly thought that I would get this phone and completely and totally hate it, but good news is I did not. Now, it's up to you. Let me know what you think about the LG Wing by dropping a comment down below. And if you liked this video in particular, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit that like button. And while you're at it, go ahead and do your boy a favor and subscribe to this channel and make sure you ring that bell, turn on notifications so you get notified every single time that I upload. Thank you guys so very much for watching this. I am Robbie Diesel, AKA Rob, from the Curated Culture and I will catch y'all on the next one. Peace.